Hi, John Gartner here and welcome to my Sake Education video series. Today I want to talk about the Nihon Shudo, also known in English as the Sake Meter Value, and often abbreviated as SMV. What is it? How is it used? How is it measured? What does it supposedly tell us? And what does it really tell us? What can it do for you? And how useful or useless is it? That's a lot to cover, so let's get started. We'll begin by talking tech for about five minutes or so, and then we'll move into how the Nihon Shudo affects flavor and what you can do with the Nihon Shu number when you do in fact see it on a label. So first of all, what is it? The Nihon Shudo is a measurement, and that measurement is expressed as a number, often but not always, listed on the label of a bottle of sake. There is no obligation, legal or otherwise, for a brewer to list the Nihon Shudo on the label, and when it is there, the number is expressed as a whole number, for example, 2, or 10, or minus 1, or 4. Technically speaking, the Nihon Shudo is a measurement of the specific gravity of the sake, the final sake. In other words, it's the measurement of the density of the final sake compared to the density of pure water. The Nihon Shudo is measured regularly during the brewing of a sake, and it gives the brewers information about how fermentation is proceeding. In other words, how well our starch to sugar conversion and the subsequent sugar to alcohol fermentation proceeding. When it is listed on the label, it's supposed to give us an indication of how sweet or how dry the sake is. However, for a handful of reasons that we'll discuss in a few minutes, the Nihon Shudo taken alone is far from reliable. In other words, it's not a very good indicator of sweet or dry. As I mentioned early on in this recording, the Nihon Shudo is often called the Sake Meter Value in English, or abbreviated the SMV. This is very commonly seen. I think that's a very, very good abbreviation. Uh, it's also very commonly used, so we need to understand it. Here, I'll be referring to it as the Nihon Shudo, but that's only because that's the term with which I'm most familiar. SMV, or Sake Meter Value, are perfectly good terms to use to apply to this as well. Let's take a step back. Actually, what is the Nihon Shudo? It's actually quite simple and very scientific. The Nihon Shudo expresses the density of the sake compared to the density of pure water. In other words, how thick is the liquid that is the sake compared to the thickness of pure water? This ratio, not just in sake but in anything, is known as the specific gravity. In some way, shape, or form, measuring the specific gravity is done in every alcoholic beverage. Why is this significant? Remember that alcohol is created when yeast ferments sugar. So in almost any alcoholic beverage, the producer wants to know how much sugar is in the liquid and then measure that sugar and observe and control the rate at which it disappears because it's being converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And so for wine and beer as well as sake, producer could measure the specific gravity along the way and see just how well, or not so well, fermentation is proceeding and to see how thoroughly the raw materials are being used. It's a very, very important parameter that's used in production of alcoholic beverages. For sake in particular, the Nihon Shudo is used to measure how quickly the enzymes from the koji convert starch to sugar and how quickly that sugar is increasing. Then, after that, the Nihon Shudo is used to measure how quickly the yeast is fermenting the sugar that has been created and converting that into alcohol and carbon dioxide. So, during some phases of the fermentation process, the amount of sugar will be on the increase, and during other phases of the fermentation process, the amount of sugar will be on the decrease. The Nihon Shudo tells the brewer exactly what is happening and how effectively it's taking place. Rewording that just a little bit, during fermentation, there's obviously lots of sugar constantly being spun off by the koji. Yet, at the same time, in the same tank, that sugar is being converted to alcohol and carbon dioxide by the yeast. With both of these two things happening at the same time, it's extremely important that the brewer knows just how fast the sugar content is changing. And it's a very, very important gauge of how well the process is proceeding. The brewers will measure the Nihon Shudo daily, and that, together with other information, will tell them just how each batch is progressing. Every batch will, of course, have a different target Nihon Shudo. Also, bear in mind that because the Nihon Shudo varies every single day throughout the brewing process, the Nihon Shudo that we see printed on the label 
when it's there, is the final Nihon Shudo, the target Nihon Shudo, the Nihon Shudo at the time that the brewing process was deemed to have been completed. How do they actually measure the Nihon Shudo? The Nihon Shudo is measured using a device called a hydrometer. The same kind of device is used for measuring the specific gravity for all liquids. The Nihon Shudo is, of course, an absolute measurement. In other words, the same scale is used everywhere. However, in the sake brewing world, they superimpose over that an arbitrary scale that is somewhat unique. While it does have a mathematical correlation to the regular measurements of specific gravity, at first glance, that doesn't seem to be the case. So while the numbers that are used to express the Nihon Shudo might seem arbitrary and unconnected to anything else, they are in fact connected to normal measurements of specific gravity. But again, the Nihon Shudo is basically measured using something called a hydrometer. And what they do is they take a sample from a fermenting tank of sake, and they put that into a glass tube, like this. Then they adjust the temperature to be exactly 15 degrees C. Then they put a calibrated float into that glass tube and see how far it sinks or, conversely, how high it floats. By looking at a graduated scale on the side of the float, they can see just how dense the liquid is and compare that to the density of pure water. So, oversimplifying just a bit, the more sugar is in the liquid, the thicker the liquid is, and the higher the float will go. The less sugar there is in the liquid, the thinner it will be, and the deeper that float will sink. Of course, it's not quite that simple. But that's the gist of it. The float part of the Nihon Shudo meter has a zero mark, and when the zero mark is just at the surface of the liquid in the tube, that indicates a density equal to that of pure water. The numbers above zero are graduated and read plus one, plus two, and plus three, and the numbers below zero, of course, graduate down, reading minus one, minus two, and lower. So please remember that. Many people might naturally think that zero means neutral in terms of sweet or dry, but actually zero simply means the same density as that of pure water. When there is less sugar in the liquid, the float will sink deeper and give us higher positive numbers. Conversely, when there's more sugar in the liquid, that will make the liquid more buoyant and the float will rise, giving us lower numbers and very commonly negative numbers. And this is at the heart of the information that the Nihon Shudo can provide to us. In short, higher numbers indicate less sugar and therefore a drier sake, whereas lower numbers indicate more sugar and therefore a sweeter sake. Again, it's not quite that simple, but that is the gist of it, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. By the way, this description and the accompanying visuals show how a Nihon Shudo has been measured using the traditional method of an actual physical hydrometer. There are, of course, much more automated methods and machines that will measure it by just putting a couple of drops of Maromi in the right place, wait a couple of minutes, and your Nihon Shudo will be measured, calculated, and displayed for you. So both methods exist, and both are in use today. Earlier, we talked about how the hydrometer works, and that the thicker the liquid is, ostensibly because there's more sugar in it, the higher the float will rise, and the lower the number we will read on the side of the hydrometer. And conversely, the thinner the liquid is, because of less sugar in it, the more that float will sink, and the higher the number we'll read on the hydrometer. And this leads to the great generalization about the Nihon Shudo, and that is that it's a very, very general indication of sweet and dry. And the higher the Nihon Shudo, the drier the sake. Again, higher is drier. But again, it ain't that simple. It's not incorrect, but it's not quite that simple. Why not? Because although the Nihon Shudo is a very, very, very rough indication of how much sugar remains, there are other things that affect the density of the sake as well. On top of that, there are many things that affect the sensation of sweet and dry in a sake. So, before talking about those, let's state this up front. The Nihon Shudo is only useful in its extremes, 
In other words, most sake in the market has a Nihonshido of perhaps minus 3 on the sweet end to plus 10 on the dry end. A minus 2 or a minus 3 will seem sweet to just about anyone, and a plus 9 or 10 will seem dry to almost anyone. But what about something like a plus 4 or a plus 5? First of all, no one can really taste the difference between these with any accuracy. And the factors that contribute to whether or not such a sake actually tastes sweet or tastes dry to most people are many, and together they far overshadow the Nihonshudo number. And that's why the Nihonshudo is only useful as an indicator of sweet or dry when it's in its extreme manifestations, which are not so commonly found. Of course, I would never shield my eyes or try not to see the number that is the Nihonshudo when it's listed, but also I do not seek to know what it is, nor would I factor it into any decision based on selecting a sake on info such as the Nihonshudo that's on the label. So let's look at those factors that also affect the perception of sweet and dry and collectively eclipse the Nihonshudo. The first of these factors to consider is the acidity. Acidity has the effect of drying out a sake. So if two sake have the exact same Nihonshido, the one with the higher acidity will taste drier. If you were to make a decision on how sweet or dry a sake is based on the Nihonshudo only without knowing the acidity, there's probably about a 20% chance of error. Next is temperature. The ability of our tongues to sense sweetness increases with temperature. In other words, sake that's closer to room temperature or even gently warmed will taste sweeter than sake that's slightly chilled. And if the sake is heated to comparatively higher temperatures, the ability to sense sweetness again disappears. So temperature is another factor that will override the number that's presented as the Nihonshu though in terms of assessing sweet and dry. So if you were to try to assess the sweetness or dryness of a sake based on the Nihonshu though only without knowing at which temperature would be served, Again, there's about a 20% chance of error. Yet another factor that would override the Nihonshu though would be the food with which you're enjoying the sake. If you're having a very, very salty dish, the sake is going to taste a bit more sweet than it would if the accompanying dish was not nearly as salty. So to assess the sweetness or dryness of a sake based on the Nihonshu though only without knowing what food it will be served with could lead to yet another 20% error or so. A less universally agreed upon factor would be the mineral content of the water. Very commonly, sake made with softer water comes across as sweeter to many people. Not always, and again, not everyone would agree with this, but to me it seems that way. As such, to make an assessment of sweet or dry based on the Nihonshu though, without knowing much about the water that went into the brew, would be opening yourself to, again, perhaps 10% error. Also, if you have a fairly sweet sake, the next sake will taste dry by comparison, and that progression would override any Nihonshu number printed on the label. Next is pasteurization. Very often unpasteurized sake or namazake tastes sweet to many people. There is no chemical reason for this to be true, but a lot of people perceive namazake as sweeter. So to try to assess sweetness or dryness based on the Nihonshudo alone without knowing whether or not you're dealing with a namazake would again open yourself up to probably about 20% error. And lastly, yeast-induced fruity aromas. With today's modern Ginjo yeasts, many people smell the fruit and instantly assume that the sake is sweeter than it actually is. So, to make an assessment of her sweet or dry based on the Nihonshu though alone without knowing what the aromatic profile is and whether or not it's got a lot of fruit in it would open yourself up to, again, about 10 to 20% error. So, if we list up all of the things we just discussed that might supersede or override the number presented as the Nihonshu though when assessing sweet or dry, and again, those things were acidity, temperature, water texture, accompanying food, other sake, pasteurization, and yeast-induced aromas, you can see that we open ourselves up to about 120% error. Now, obviously, I'm being a bit facetious here, but the point is, to make an assessment of sweet to dry based on the Nihon Shudo alone opens yourself up to a lot of potential error, which is why I always say the Nihon Shudo is only useful in its extreme manifestations. A plus 10 will be dry. A minus 2 will be sweet. In the middle there, nobody can really tell the difference with any regularity. So to wrap this discussion up with a concise sound bite you can put in your back pocket and head out to drink sake, the Nihonshudo, also known as the sake meter value, and often abbreviated SMV, 
is really a brewing tool that tells brewers how fast sugar is either being created or fermented. But when put on the label, it's a very, very rough indication of sweet and dry that's only useful in its extreme manifestations. And just remember that higher is drier. That's all you really need to know. Until next time, be well and come pie. Thank you.